Hey, good evening or morning, whatever the time may be that you're watching this video. Uh, we're going to finish chapter four, which is uh, the mortgage uh, schedule, the payment calculator, and the interest rate scheduler, all built into one uh, Excel file. In chapter four, we did pages one through 20 and 21 through 36. Today, we're going to start on page 36 and go over it briefly about how you can use this information to make good decisions. And then we'll go ahead and work on page 20, 37 and finish out the rest of the chapter. So right now, we're looking at a house. What happens if we look for a car? And say we want to buy a car for um, $8,000. And we're going to pay a $500 down payment. Whoops, that's $80,000. There we go and $7,500. If we were able to get 3.8% interest and we're paying it off in four years, our payments would be $168.92, which isn't too bad. Have it paid off in four years. And uh, our total cost would be $8,600. So about a, about 600 something dollars worth of interest uh, over the life of the loan. However, let's look at it a different way. What happens if we are paying 6% interest? What happens to our $168.92? Turns to $176, which is not bad. Our term is still four years. Not bad at all. So that's a good thing for a car. Now let's talk about loans. If we go to our bank and borrow $8,000 at 6%, then we're still getting the same amount. But most places that loan you money quickly aren't going to charge you this low of an interest rate. So let's change this to a $5,000 loan. Of course, we're not going to make a down payment on a loan. We want to borrow the money. At 6% for four years, it's $117. But what happens if we go to one of those loan places on the side of the road that charge, let's say, 25%? Look at the amount of interest you're going to pay back in four years. You're paying... $3,000 worth of interest for a $5,000 loan. Now, what happens if it goes even up more? You could obviously understand that it's going to be more and more interest. What if we borrowed the same amount of money at a bank for 6% or 5%? Then we're only paying $527 in interest. See the difference? Uh, the percentage makes. So when your parents talk about percents or borrowing money, all that type of stuff, that's what they're looking at. Now let's look at one other scenario. Let's say we're going to buy a car and it's going to be a really nice car. So we're going to say we're going to buy it for $30,000 and let's put $500 down again just to have a down payment. Now we are looking at a five-year note probably, maybe a six-year. So we're looking at $556 at 5%. What if we're having to pay 8%? So that ends up costing us about $6,300 worth of interest. So that's a not too bad. But what if we can't afford this $598? We needed to get it down to five years. And our boss, or not our boss, but the loan company is going to charge us a 12% interest. Can I get this down to $500? I can. And the way they do it is they change the term to go to like seven years that you're paying it. Okay, it's $500 roughly, not too bad. But look at the payment now. We're paying $14,000 worth of interest. So our $30,000 car that we really paid $29,500 for is now going to cost me $44,000. So interest is huge. So don't always look at the monthly payment. Because we can manipulate the percent in the term and get the monthly payment down to a different around, amount. But the big thing is that 12%. Go down to 6%, we're only looking at about $6,700. Way different than $14,000. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now we're going to change this back and we're going to go ahead and start working on the assignment. But I, practicality speaking, we need to know that that dealing with money is one of the most uh, most important things we can learn because whether we're going to be doctors, lawyers, nurses, whatever, we're all going to be spending money. And we want to spend it 
correctly so that we have more money in our pocket for retirement. Okay, so printing selections in a worksheet, setting up the worksheet to print. So in a way to set up the worksheet to print, the book tells us just to go to a page layout, go to page setup, and this is how we set it up. We can set it up to print uh, horizontally, landscape, or vertically portrait, and we can click on fit to, and we can fit this sheet to one page. And I believe that's what it's having us do on this particular assignment. Let me look here. It says step one on page 37, display the page layout tab, then click the page setup dialog box launcher to set it up. So this is it. And I'm going to click on the page tab if necessary. And then click fit to. I'm going to fit the whole entire worksheet to one piece of paper. Okay. And then the next thing it wants me to do is click the sheet tab and click black and white. So I'm going to click on the sheet tab. And I'm going to click black and white. That way we don't print it in color and waste printer ink. And then click OK. All right. Step one on page 38 now is setting a print area. So instead of printing the whole entire document, maybe we want to print just part of it. And in this particular case, C3 to F8 is all we want to print. So C3 to F8 is all we want to print. So I'm going to select that area. Then I'm going to go up here to print area. And I'm going to set print area. So now this area is the only thing that's going to print. Okay. Now to see if that's the case, I'm going to go to the file button and then print. And it's going to show me what is going to print, the print area. Okay. Now it wants me to go back. And it wants me to clear the print area. So I'm going to click clear print area. And it's cleared it. Now... That's one way to do it. We can select a section and then tell it to print, or we could actually name a section. So we're going to go to the page setup dialog box again, and we're going to go to the sheet tab, and we're going to remove the black and white. So it will print in color. And we're going to click on OK. And then we're going to select C3 to F8, which I still select have selected. And in the name box, we're going to type in mortgage payment. Now, it's super important that you use the underscore in between the two words, or the computer will think that you're trying to type two different words, and it'll give you an error, or it'll name it the wrong thing. Mortgage underscore payment. And then hit enter. Okay. And then it wants us to create another range, C9 to F22, which is C9 here to F22. And it wants us to name it interest schedule. And you got it right, H3 to L22. It wants us to name this one amortization schedule. Underscore. And then it wants us to do B2 to M23. B2 to M23 our whole thing, including a black, uh, not black, but dark blue box around it. And this one's going to be called financial tools. Okay. Now we can do our drop down box and we can see all of our ours. And I can't remember if I typed in the interest schedule correctly. So that's what I'm looking for. And I don't see an interest schedule. I see a mortgage payment. And I see amortization schedule, but I don't see my mortgage payment, I mean my interest schedule. So I think I didn't do that right. So let me select that again. I don't think I put the underscore. So let me type it in again. Interest schedule. Oh, interest underscore schedule. There we go. Now I have all of them done. Now, on number three, it says click mortgage payment in the name list. So I'm going to click on mortgage payment in the name list. And then I'm going to click on the file. And then I'm going to go to print. And then instead of printing active sheets, I'm going to do the drop down and print selection. And there's my selection. And on page four or page 40, page uh, steps four and five, 
it wants you to actually print each of these selections. And we're not going to do that because you might not have a printer. And even if you do, you probably don't want to waste ink on it. But that's how you would print each of the different sections on different pieces of paper. OK, so now we're going to move on to page 41 and we're going to learn how to protect and hide worksheets and workbooks. Protecting is a really, really cool feature that I highly recommend that you do because you spend all this work on this assignment or on this job assignment and you don't want somebody to come in and accidentally click on something like right here or right here and screw up all of your data. So you only want them to change certain things. For instance, what we're going to do right now. So we have on page 42, step one, six, select the range D5 to D7. So we're going to select the range D5 to D7. And we're also going to select F4 to F5. So I'm going to hold the control button down, and we're going to allow people to change the rate and the term. So they can change the name, the price, the down payment, the rate, and the term. So we have all those selected. Now we need to go to our format cells. So we're going to right click in the selection, go to format cells. And then right here, there's a tab called protection. We've not used that before. So we'll click on protection. And then we're going to make sure that both are checked. Okay. So we're going to make sure they're unchecked because locking cells or hiding formulas has no effect until you protect it. So we want to uncheck both of those. Okay. I think I said check them, but we want to remove them. And we'll click OK. Now nothing's different. Nothing's unlocked. We haven't locked the document yet. All we have is we've just said that we want to be able to do that. Now we're going to protect it. So we're going to go to the review tab and we're going to go to protect sheet. Now you can type in a password, but we really don't need to type in a password because there's no sense in remembering one. We're just going to leave it blank. Okay. So now it's going to protect the worksheet and contents of the locked cells. So select lock cells and select unlock cells are going to be left on. We can still click on them. We just can't do anything to it. Okay. So then we're going to click OK. And now I can select on it, but I can't do anything to it. I can't delete the data. See, it's saying, hey, you can't delete this. But if I go over here to the 3.875, I can change it to 4.125. And it'll do that, and it'll give me my new data. Or I can change the word house to um, condo. And it'll allow me to change those. But it won't allow me to change the loan amount here because that's a locked cell. That's really, really fun to be able to use, especially when you're building a lot of data and you don't want people messing with the formulas again. Okay, so that is pages 42 and 43. Now the next thing is, is we're going to hide and unhide a worksheet. And this is just to show you how to do it. So mortgage payment calculator, I can right click it and I can hide it. Whoops, I forgot to add another sheet. I'm not reading the directions here. Page 45, step one, create a new sheet. Now I can right click the mortgage payment calculator sheet and hide it. And it's gone. You can't see it. Uh, if I have multiple sheets, I can hide all the sheets but one. If I want to unhide them because you can't see it anywhere, you can click on the sheet one. Right click it, I mean and then click unhide. And it will ask you, what ones do you want to unhide? You say, okay. Now, the book suggests that you are able to hide a workbook. For instance, if you need to step away from your desk, something like that, it's a lot easier to control, delete, and lock your workstation because then somebody needs a password to get on. But this is also a quick way to hide it if you're in a hurry to do something. You can actually go here and you can click on hide, and it will actually hide your worksheet. Uh, and, I mean workbook. It hides the entire workbook. And you just click unhide to unhide it. And it'll ask you what you want to unhide. Okay. So those are steps on 40, page 46 and page 45. And the very last thing it wants us to do is to enable formula checking. And the reason why is because this will allow the computer to continuously check for errors. 
So we're going to click on the File button, and we're going to go down here to Options. And then we're going to go to Formulas. And then working with formulas and the error checking, let's see, it says click Formulas. In the Formula Calculation, it wants us to do error checking and make sure that all of them are checked. And in my particular circumstance, they're all checked. You might have one that's unchecked. Uh, a lot of times, the formulas here referring to empty cells is unchecked. If it is, just check it. And then you need to reset any, any uh, errors. And then you're done. Okay, and this will allow your computer to error check for all of these different things. Unlock cells, F formulas, anything like that. So that way we are able to make sure we don't make any mistakes or as little as possible as far as our formulas go. All right, now we're done. Page 48 is the last page, and it says click OK to take the options off, which I just did. And now we're going to save it. Make sure you have it saved correctly. Remember the file name is supposed to be sc underscore ex underscore four underscore mortgage underscore and then your name. And then once you save it, then you're going to upload it to the Canvas site there where it says uh, MindTap and it will automatically grade it. Once it's graded, I want you to go back and I want you to find any errors that you have and fix those and resubmit it until you get a 100 on the assignment. Have a wonderful day, and I hope this video has helped you guys.